It's the National Football League on EA Sports. And if it's in the game, it's in the game. It's the Buccaneers and the Texans coming up next. On a wonderful fall afternoon in the state of Texas, the roof is open and we've got football from NRG Stadium in Houston. Straight ahead, we've got a pretty good one on tap here as it'll be the Tampa Bay Buccaneers taking on the Houston Texans. Brandon Gunn joined, as always, by Charles Davis. Uh, CD, it's been a tough few years here in Houston. Four, four, and three. Those are their win totals the last three seasons. But in is D'Amico Ryan's as head coach. What do you think he brings to the table? And it's interesting you brought up the number three because D'Amico Ryan's is the third head coach in three seasons for this team. What he brings to the table, toughness, organization, and hope. He wanted to be the head coach of the Houston Texans, the team he played for. And then for the visiting box, you know, all of a sudden, Super Bowl 55 feels like it was a long time ago. Tom Brady retired. Some of the stalwarts of that team have moved on. They did win the NFC South last year, but they did so with a losing record at 8-9. and nine. And sometimes when you have a chance to begin again, other people emerge and play at a level that you don't expect. And that's what Tampa Bay needs from this team in 2023. And we are underway from NRG Stadium in Houston. And here comes a return from just beyond the goal line. And tackled at the 21-yard line, so a net negative there of four yards. So here are the Buccaneers ready to go on offense with a new man at the helm here for 2023 in his sixth season now in the NFL, Baker Mayfield. The former number one overall pick has had his ups and downs in recent seasons, but he finished strong last year and inherits a really good offense in Tampa that should set him up for success. Now a third round pick a year ago. Here's Rashad White. And he finds some space past the 25 to the 27. Five yards on the game's first play. Second down. Oh, that was a thing of beauty right there. Look at how quick those blockers fired off the line once the ball was snapped. That was an O-line on a mission, all in sync. And the defense is lucky that play only picked up five yards. On second down, they'll run with White. And they get him down but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 15 yards as Tampa Bay picks up the first. That's a very nice game there, a confidence-building run. Love the execution up front, and the way he pressed the hole, absolutely perfect. First down, here's White. And he's going to bowl his way forward to the 48. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. That's a really nice job by them picking up the run blitz and detecting it and blocking it and turning it into a nice run. And a lot of times you think if you blitz a running play, you're going to smother it. But a lot of the blitzers, they come in a little bit high. They don't have great leverage, and they're easily blocked and turned to the side. And he goes across midfield and down into Houston territory. A three-yard pickup on second and four. Now they'll need to convert here on third and a little more than a yard. That's some good tackling there to keep him short of that yellow line. Yeah, defensively, all I'm thinking is that on that play, get me to third down. Get me into a position where I can make one more play and get my defense off the field. On third and one, here's Mayfield. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. Instead of a third and one run, they go pass, and they get 12 yards out of it. So after several rushes to start the game, Charles, they go to the air there and get a nice completion. Nice mix-up on the play calling, right? Establish the running game, make the defense think you're going to do it again, and then hit them over the top. Now you've got them betwixt and between. They don't know which way you're going to come at them. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. From the shotgun, it's Mayfield. And that one incomplete, but now a penalty flag coming in late. That might be P.I. Defense. 
Well, obviously, they never want to see penalties on that defense, but this one a little bit more significant there on the downfield pass play. And coaches preach it all the time. You can't put yourself in that kind of position if you're the defender. You've got to stay in a spot far downfield where you can play the ball without creating extra contact. Vaughn is not going to advance very far. He'll be stopped right at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play that time, and it sets up second and goal. Brandon, you're a big lover of music. How about what you just saw there? This is what I call playing the piano for a defensive lineman, the ability to move laterally up and down the line of scrimmage. How about the way he just flowed and got to the outside part of the field and made that play? Vaughn again. And not a whole lot there as he'll get him down at about the two. Two runs in a row, but only two yards to show for him. His path became similar to almost running a stretch play, didn't it? Trying to find a crease anywhere to put his foot in the ground and cut back. It just never materialized. Third down and goal now. And this Houston defense not backing down. They'll look for one more stop. They'll look to run with Vaughn. And boy, a good surge defensively. It'll depend on the mark, but I'm not sure he got there. Only a yard that time, so now a decision to be made here on fourth and goal. A very early decision to be made here. There is, and I think that because they're the home team, I would ride that wave a little bit, and I would gamble and go for it. Doesn't seem like it's optimal, but you're the home team. You'll get the support of the crowd all game long. Go get it right now. Put six on the board. And his kick is right there. It's good, and the Bucks take a 3-0 lead. Even though they didn't find the end zone, they have to be pretty pleased with how they moved the ball on the ground because we know that that was one of their big goals in this game. And that really goes through the entire offense because when you're running the ball effectively, just about everyone's involved. It's not just the guy carrying the football. It's everyone blocking for him, both inside and on the perimeter. After the main field goal, here's McLaughlin back out there to kick it away. From a yard or two deep, here comes a return. And he'll get it up past the 20 to about the 22. So here come the Texans now for their first drive. Leading them out, a two-year starter at Ohio State and second overall pick in the draft, C.J. Stroud. For every rookie prospect, there are always nerves involved in this moment. Running your team out to start a game. But there's a reason they brought him in. We're willing to make him their starter today. They believe he can overcome those nerves and lead his team to a victory. We saw him do it at the collegiate level and really make himself into a leader and someone you can envision doing the exact same thing here in the NFL. On first down, here's Stroud. This will be caught by Brown. It'll go as a gain of four, and that'll bring up second down. Oh, I see you nodding your head along with me, partner, because it's pretty obvious what they were trying to do there on the drag route. With his speed, they're hoping he can turn the corner and maybe take this to the house. But that was excellent work defensively to make sure once he caught it, he wasn't going anywhere. A man coming off a great rookie year. It's Damian Pierce. And the second wave of tacklers is going to get him as they stop him behind the line. A loss on that play, and now third down gets tougher, third and six. How about the job there on the outside? Shed the wide receiver and was able to make the tackle on the perimeter. Third down and six. Stroud to throw it. That is caught, and they're able to get this one across the 35. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. When you give up points on the opening drive, in this case a field goal, you'd hate to go three and out. They avoid that. They do, and it's also walking that fine line mentally, too, as a coach, isn't it? Because you want to emphasize to your team exactly what you said. All right, we gave up a field goal. Let's go back and at least equal that, guys. But if we don't, you don't want them to feel like it's the end of the world, either. Nice that they were able to pick up the first down there, help them relax a little bit. Now here's Stroud. And this one almost intercepted. Not a good throw there. Nearly an opening drive, INT. As a defensive back, you have some weapons at your disposal that we don't often talk about. And you can read the receiver's eyes, you can read his hands, and you know that the arrival of the ball is imminent, and that allows you to make a play on it, and oftentimes, knock it away. Stroud. 
gets it away, and it falls down incomplete. Offenses all over continue to be aggressive, and most people never turn down a shot at a deep ball, but oftentimes it attracts a little bit of extra attention, and it did on that play, and that one got knocked away. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has him staring at a third and ten. Stroud working out of the gun. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And this is going to lead to another first down as the tackle's made at the Fox 39. That would go for 24 yards. Well, on third down, he wanted to go to one of his most dependable targets, and that's who he found, his tight end there, to pick up the first, Charles. And he used the proper word there, dependable, and sometimes spectacular, because tight ends nowadays, they can do it all. But they're the guys you trust, especially across the middle of the field where there's traffic. He delivers, and they pick up nice yardage. First and 10, it's Pierce. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. A quick burst there, and he nicely bit off a pretty decent gain. Here now, second and four. Here's Stroud. Schultz hauls in the quick throw. And this is going to lead to another first down as the tackle's made at the box 21. Texans passing game in rhythm right now, picking up another first. Give the rookie another one on this opening drive and a first down with it. A nice start, Charles, for the first-year passer. He's come out, made a few plays, nice plays to begin this contest. He certainly has, and if he finishes off this drive with a touchdown pass, I vote we don't call him rookie anymore. We'll move him right to veteran and continue from there. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. That's what you're going to need to do against those big receivers. You got to get in there and get physical with them. That time he got in close, got in tight, and knocked the ball away. Second and ten. And Stroud now to throw. And they're going to get him. He's sacked back around the 28. That's Kalijah Kansi in to get him down. All about the offense so far this drive, putting something sustained together. But the defense, they responded on that play. Second and manageable became third and long. The drive marching to the end zone is one play from stalling out. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. And he'll protect himself at the end here as he winds up getting pretty decent yardage. Five yards that time out of the scramble. But now they're looking at a fourth down situation. I thought he did a pretty good job there to get back what he could. But let's face it, that sack on second down, talk about throwing a wrench into the works. It certainly did. Yeah, he did everything he could there, trying to pick up some positive yardage. And he did, but not enough. So on fourth down, Texan kicker Kaimi Fairbairn comes on. From the right hash, this from an even 40 yards out. Fairbairn able to put this one through, and that will tie us at 3-3. So a return of serve, so to speak, here on the second drive of our game as they respond to that opening field goal with three of their own. I like that. Go a little tennis on me. I know you. You like to mix it up I with like sports. That. They, yeah. crack, they crack a forehand back out, and they get a backhand. What was the serve? It, what was the return on? It was a backhand. I and like a that. really good backhand. It's a nice top spin on the a little, little bit. bit. A little I bit. love it. Almost a mirror image when you really get down to it. I thought that was pretty good stuff. Each team with a possession, each team with a field goal as the kick is away. And he'll get it up just past the 20 as his guys will go to work at the 21-yard line. Tampa Bay, they're getting ready to set up shop here for their second drive. Their drive last time, it stalled out. They were forced to take the short field goal. And the key phrase, you nailed it. Forced to because you know coaches look at these short field goals as a last resort, right? To them, that's not how drives are supposed to end. You're supposed to put six on the board. That's a consolation prize. Like going to the county fair, you don't get the big stuffed animal on that one, do you? No, you don't go top shelf. That's bottom shelf material. Here's a throw to his running back. It's complete. Give him a gain of five on the completion, and that'll make it second down. I know it was a gain, but you have to sense probably a little bit of disappointment there because when it's out there in open space, 
I think they expect to get more out of a play, don't you? Especially when you're getting it to your guy out of the backfield. You're expecting him to be able to create something, be a little more shifty. Yeah, no doubt about it. Good open field tackling held it to an okay game. First catch for him on the afternoon, and it results in a first down. That was a route run not just with dexterity, but with intelligence. Found the hole in the zone, made sure the quarterback saw it, and was able to make the sure catch and flip the down marker back to one. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. They go with White on the counter. And down he goes just beyond the 35, and that pretty move got him some extra space to run. The time called here because a member of the Texans is in some discomfort. Well, the medical staff is going to come out here and take a look, and we will take a short break. Second down, Mayfield. And his throw is going to be incomplete. I think that's a big time play there because the slant route is really hard to cover because the timing is so quick. But able to see it, diagnose it, and get to the football, that's why he's able to bat it away. They come up now, third and five, following the incomplete pass. Mayfield now. And this almost intercepted. Not sure he saw the free safety that time. But lucky, incomplete, that'll bring up fourth down. One first down here, and that's all, folks. Good work by this defense to hold things in check and force a punting situation. Fourth down, so Jake Camarda is out there. Back deep is Tank Dell. Fielded just inside the 20. It'll be a 41-yard punt. Give them five on the return. And the Texans will take over. So now we get set to see Houston for their second drive of the ball game. And they had a long drive last time, but they had to settle for a field goal, and I'm sure that's how it felt to them, settling. They probably should have gotten in the end zone. Yeah, not out now joy, right? Because that's what you get when you put the ball in the end zone. But there are benefits to that type of a long drive. Your defense gets a chance to take a break, adjust a little bit, maybe get themselves ready to get back out on the field and play a little bit better. So they'll take the benefit, even though they wanted the six points. Yeah, maybe wore down the other defense. We'll see. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. First play of the drive, going for 14, and also going for a first down. Not too shabby for his first carry of the game. That's exactly what most teams are looking for, a really good change of pace back. Stroud to the air on first and 10. A short one going to be taken in here by Schultz. So give him two yards there on the completion, and it'll be second down. Yeah, that one was covered pretty well because they were trying to leak the tight end out into the flat. I think they were hoping he could catch it, turn up field, and pick up the first down. From the 41, here's second down and eight. Now Stroud. And it's incomplete. I tell you what, that's a veteran play from a guy in his first season in the NFL. A lot of rookies are trying to force something there. He thought better of it, and that was the right decision. So the failure to connect on second down, that leaves him staring up here at a third and eight. Stroud looking to throw. Oh, he had a man open. He overshot him. It's incomplete. Looked like they were set up defensively in a zone coverage, but somehow they found a seam because that receiver all alone by rights, that should have been a touchdown, but somehow this ball's overthrown. Now on fourth down, it's Cameron Johnston on to punt it away. Back deep for the Bucs is Devin Tompkins. Fair catch called for right around the 11-yard line. So possession goes over here on the punt, and the Bucs are going to take over first and 10 deep in their own territory. Now Mayfield and the Bucs come up on first and 10 at their own 12-yard line. On play action, they'll throw. And that's going to be incomplete. They'll put a 
check mark in the box where the defense coordinator was saying, how well can we stay with these receivers if we're in man coverage? Because he just did it on that one, forcing incompletion. That allowed him to get bolder with his pass rush, won't it? Absolutely. Frees up your guys elsewhere. They come up with exactly one minute to go in this first quarter. They run straight ahead here with White. And he's brought down, but not before they get it across the 20-yard line. 44 yards rushing for him now on just six carries to this point. Well, they came into this game saying it was important that they set the tone and show that they can run the football. I believe that they've done that here in the first quarter. They go right back to White here on first down. And not much doing there. Maybe a yard up to the 23. Well, sometimes you just have to give credit to the defense. Great job there at the point of attack, holding up. They won their battles at the line of scrimmage. Left him no space to try and run. Really nice job swarming to the ball carrier. These two teams all tied after one. Second quarter now, and it's Buccaneer football. As they're looking at a second down and nine to go. Here's Mayfield. Quick throw, finding Mike Evans. That was a nicely run slant route, and what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route, and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps, and cuts towards the middle of the field, and now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and get the quarterback a really nice target. They'll try to pick this up on the ground with White, and he went backwards. He'll be down at the 30. A loss of a yard, and it brings up four. Just a simple run play there on third and one, but this D was up to the challenge and stopped them, bringing up fourth down. Here's Jake Camarda now. And no return on this one as the fair catch is signaled for and taken. A 40-yard punt, no return, and the Texans will take over with a first and 10. Back to throw, here's Stroud. He'll get this into the hands of Nico Collins. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. Successful start to the drive, 17 yards, and moves the sticks. Well, that certainly has to feel good. That's not all the time that the play caller should get all the credit. Sometimes I think in the huddle, the quarterback just says, hey, who's going to make a play for me? I just need something right here. And the end result there, nice first down. Drive keeps moving. Stroud, left sideline, a dime, and it looks like he's got it. Another first down as he went right back to the same well, this time for 17 yards. I know that rookie quarterbacks have to earn veteran receivers trust. Maybe we saw that on that play with that type of effort, huh? Yeah, helping out the rook with a heck of a catch. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. A run for Pierce out of the gun. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. That's good for 21 yards on a first down. Would you say this offense is locked in right now? They're having no trouble on this drop. What is it? Three plays, three first downs. Yeah, you talk about on the march. They keep this up, they'll get to the end zone real fast. So from inside the 20, here's first and 10 at the 18. Throwing now is Stroud. And just not enough on the throw there. Down around his feet and incomplete. Maybe a little over anxious in the pocket there. He just didn't look comfortable on that throw. No, he didn't because it wasn't his normal fluid delivery. And I think you might have had it right. He wasn't really confident with what he saw downfield and almost felt like he wanted to pull that one back. 
On second down, it's Stroud. And he finds his target, it's Schultz. And he gets this inside the 10 to the 9. It's also a gain of 9. Let's not quibble about the gain there on second down. That was a positive play because that was a take-what-you-can-guess situation. Got out to the tight end. Now it gives them a much better opportunity to convert on third down. The Texans on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. They're up against a third and one situation. Now here's Stroud. He's got his running back out of the backfield. And the Texans are going to have a first and goal coming up as they find a way to convert there on third and one. But they've certainly done a nice job spreading the ball around on this drive. This time he gets it out to his back, and it's another nice play and another first down. They've got the defense on their heels a little bit. They're reacting instead of being aggressive and making plays. Now they'll bring one of their tight ends in motion right. Here's Pierce. Oh, he's going absolutely nowhere as he is hit behind the line. Call it a full three yards in the wrong direction there. Brings up second down. That's a really alert defense there because they saw the heavy look come in from the offense. Countered it with extra linebackers who brought a little bit of speed and heft and able to really make a big time play for their defense. And they'll let the fullback try and take him home. And he's going to press this one forward as they stop it right around the one. Give him right around four on the carry. We'll see if they want to keep pounding here on third and goal. And that was a good collision right there. And I know this as a former defender. If you're playing linebacker, you're going through a checklist on every play on who you think's going to get the ball and where you think the ball's going to go. Rarely do you expect the fullback position to get it. And on that play, you did. So you've got to steal yourself at that point because the contact is going to be strong. It's a loss of a full three yards, and it brings up fourth down. The short field shrinks even more with the type of bodies they brought in on that play. Those extra tight ends, they weren't able to secure their blocks, and that one ended up going backwards. Now Kaimi Fairbairn out for the field goal try for the Texans. From the right hash, and this one just a chippy. The kick by Fairbairn is good. So a long drive gets him down inside the five, but ultimately they set up for just the field goal. And I have to think that if maybe they were a yard closer, that would have made their decision tougher, and I think they likely would have gone for it. But in this situation, they just decided to take the three, and I think it was a smart move. So all field goals so far, 6-3 our score as the kick is away. From a couple yards deep, he'll bring it out of the end zone. And they'll get him down right at the 25-yard line, so the same result, and he opted for the touchback. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. And it's been very much a slow start for them. Three drives and just the three-point CD. Yeah, if you're into the points-per-drive ratio, that answer is one. And that's not going to get it done in a ball game. They've got to find a way to finish these drives in end zones, not have the balls go through goalposts. Now Mayfield and the Bucks come up on first and 10 at their 25-yard line. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. And that one too wide and incomplete. Go with a dime work on defense. Two extra defensive backs on the field and covered up essentially every blade of grass. That allowed them to disrupt the play. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. Mayfield to throw it. And this one incomplete. Too much contact to hold on to that one, and it's third down another zone defense it looks like it's open for possibilities but they did a nice job patrolling the middle of the field and forcing an incompletion now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions now Mayfield and that's complete it's Chris Godwin and he is going to have the Buccaneers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion 
I don't care how many times we see it, I still get a kick out of watching quarterbacks and receivers do the pass trick in pregame warm-up. But I always remember that when we go to practices, we see that after practices as well. They really tune it up, don't they? They tune it up. They know why they do it for these situations. First down. And they build that trust, and that's why they're able to find him in this type of a situation. They'll go up the middle with White. And he fights forward for a modest two-yard gain. Second down. <laughs> I know we can't hear what's going on in that hole right now, but I'll guarantee you at least one offensive lineman is saying, my bad, we simply couldn't move him off the line of scrimmage. We've got to do a better job trying to root those guys out of there. Here's a second and eight. to run again here with White. And this winds up a pickup of two, maybe two and a half to about the 39. Two yards on the first down carry and then followed up by two yards on the second down carry. Well, that's definitely not going to be enough to get the job done. Wasn't the expression three yards in a cloud of dust? <laughs> now they're going to need six on third down to keep the drive going. On third down, Mayfield. No, he tries to force it in and it's intercepted. Shaquille Griffin with a pick. Inside the 10. And they will score a pick six for the Texans TD. It just appeared there that the defense, they had that red from the moment the ball was snapped. And not only did they get the interception, add a nice return on top of it, all the way to the end zone for a defensive touchdown. Yeah, and the guy made the play, he gets the points. But it really was a group effort, wasn't it? How about the coaches? They've got to be so excited. All the preparation, time in the film room. It translated into a big play to put points on the board for their team. Kaimi Fairbairn on for the extra point. And it's up and good to make the score 13 to 3. A heck of a play there defensively, getting the interception, navigating his way into the end zone for the touchdown. So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six. And now the kick is away. Now a hit and a loose football. Well, one of the linebackers has got it. And his guys will take over at the 25-yard line. So problems compounding themselves here on the return. They just give up the touchdown. And now, and now as with every potential turnover, they're going to take a second look at this just to make sure. Now the question, was the knee in fact down before this ball comes loose? And is the video convincing enough to overturn it? A lot of factors here. Remember, you also need clear possession of football afterwards. This is a tough one to overturn. After review of the play, the ruling on the field is reversed. So that one overturned. They say the knee was down, and that will not be ruled a fumble. The Bucks offense set to begin their next possession. Now remember, they were just out here a moment ago threw the pick six, so we'll see if they can take better care of the football this go around. And sometimes, partner, I think it's almost better that you just throw the pick six and you come right back out on the field. You're not over on the sidelines dwelling for it for very long. You're not hearing everyone say, oh, hey, you'll get them next time. Hey, don't worry about it. All that stuff just goes right out the window. You're right back out on the field with a chance to atone. Mayfield on play action. This one taken in by Otten. That was an okay hook up there with his tight end, but unfortunately, they didn't get the kind of yards they had hoped for. That's going to bring up third down. The offense on third down, they've converted just two for six thus far. 
This will be third and five. Mayfield. And this pass broken up. But the contact well timed there. And now fourth down. That's an excellent job right there on third down. Like any defense, you never want to let them get anything started. And that would have been a first down. Instead, you saw the contact on time, no penalty. And before this drive could get wings, it's fourth down. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. So a change of possession here on the punt. And that will come the offense as they take over. The Texans back out there and ready to go. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember they did put points on yeah, the board. Three and, points is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. They'll start on the ground with Pierce. And he'll take it forward for about five up to the 28-yard line. That's a really nice, tough run inside. And they gained five yards on it. And to be frank about it, most offenses don't expect to get five yards on a play call like that. So when they do, they go back to their huddle with a little pep in their steps. They're starting to think that they're starting to dominate the line of scrimmage. And they'll go play action here with Stroud. And that falls to the ground incomplete. A nice job of bodying him up defensively. And now it brings up third down. He did a fine job there of not hitting him before the ball arrived. And I've got to tell you, you can often mistime that play because of the angles of approach. When you're going to get him, sometimes you panic as well and think, I've got to be there right now. Instead, in this case, timed it perfectly and knocked it free. And now the third down throw incomplete as well. Yeah, that's a nice job there defensively to blanket those receivers on third down. And as a quarterback, all you can do is just loft one toward the bench, not too close, mind you, and live to punt the football. On fourth down, out is the punter Cameron Johnston to boot it away. It'll be 37 yards there on the punt, and the Bucs will get ready to go on offense. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. The crowd may be losing just a little bit of the edge after back-to-back -back punts. They want some big plays. They want to see some offense. They want to see somebody break away, whether it's through the air or on the ground. Now it'll be interesting to see where the patience is on both sides. Each head coach, can you hang in there and not try and force something that could put your team in some jeopardy? First down, Mayfield. Over the middle to Evans. And he's dropped right at the 40. Gain of three. They kept the receiver in the short field, but that let his quarterback get the ball quickly to him before either guy in double coverage could react. Here's second and seven. To throw Mayfield to Evans on the slam. And he'll be stopped right at midfield. That'll be a pickup of 10 as they try to recover from this 10-point deficit. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh so effective. Nice completion there. Keeps the sticks moving. Two minutes remaining in this first half of football. Mayfield now from the 50. And this is caught by Evans. So give him five yards there on the pitch and catch. And it's second down. They like going to him in the slot. He catches another one. I think this comes under the heading of until they stop him, why not go back to him? He has something going really well. Great working relationship with the guy throwing the ball. And they keep making the connection. Mayfield now on second down. That's taken in by Palmer. And he'll go out of bounds after taking it a little further down inside the 40. He's got his first catch here before halftime, and it goes for a first down. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. This is White on the screen. 
And he's taken down inside the 30. The Bucks passing game looking good on this drive. It's a first down. They ran that one well. And not only did they pick up a nice chunk of yardage on the screen, they sent a message to the defense. Rush the passer all you want, but you better be careful. We can hit you going back the other direction. A first and 10 here. And you know, if they could just get three out of this, something about whittling it to a one-score game at half that might provide a psychological boost. So five yards here, five on the play. And that's going to bring up second down. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made a nice easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. Now second and five. On the draw, it's White. Nifty move. And he'll get him inside the 15 down to the 14-yard line. Now the Bucks going to use the first of their timeouts as they stop it with 28 seconds to go in the first half of play. Here's a first and 10 at the 14-yard line. Mayfield looks to throw to the goal line, but it's incomplete. Fair to say, hasn't been his best game throwing the football, but also not getting a lot of help out there either. Yeah, you kind of you nailed it pretty well, you know. <laughs> He's got to throw it better, got to get more help. Obviously one that should have been caught. They got to find a way to bring those, those two elements together so they can make some progress in this one. Second down, Mayfield. from this defense because their coverage has been playing on the shutdown level so far, even backed up late. They're forcing incompletions and fighting to keep them out of the end zone as the first half winds down. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have them looking at third and ten. Working out of the gun, Mayfield. And that is incomplete. 16 seconds now on the clock. Another good drive, Charles, but it looks like another that might end in a field goal try. They've made some nice plays. They've given themselves opportunities, but as you noted, another field goal attempt coming up. And that's not how they want to end drives. They've got to figure out what's the final touch that they need to push it across the goal line. And still yet to find the end zone. And this one is right through. And they will cut the lead back down to a touchdown now at 13-6. So the three points here, they're still down, but they put somewhat of a dent into that lead going into the break. Anything helps when you're trying to chip away at a lead, but they do know that they're going to need a little bit better effort in the second half. So not much time to speak of remaining in this first half as the kick's away. The lane opens here. He's past the 30. And able to break this out all the way to the 38-yard line. Great return. Houston's offense already at the line, set to get going. And with seven seconds remaining, not much time to really do anything. And they'll throw it with Stroud here, first and ten. Throwing the out route incomplete. That's Collins. And he'll be out of bounds, but able to get it up past the 45. And that's good for a pickup of ten yards. And they'll be left with a second and about a foot. Final play of the half, Stroud. Throw left side complete. That's Schultz. And he's able to take it across midfield before going out of bounds. So we have reached halftime with a touchdown. That's the difference on the scoreboard. As we send you on over to Orlando for Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports halftime report. Take it away, We're certainly treated to an entertaining first half. Both these teams with some high points and maybe a couple of low points as well. So it's going to be a question of who can be the most disciplined team going forward. All 
right, Coach. Thanks. Yeah, both teams likely to make some changes in what's been a closely fought battle to this point. It's the Texans in front, and they're going to get the football first as we are back underway in the third quarter. And here comes a return from just beyond the goal line. And the decision to come out of the end zone is going to cost him five yards as he's taken down right at the 20. So here's the Texans offense now. They get set to start this third quarter. And Charles, they've got the lead. Put your coaching hat on here now. What's the game plan for the second half? I think getting the running game going a little bit more because I thought in the first half they didn't get it moving the way that they would like. They had success throwing it, but I think these first couple of drives, they'll want to get those running backs going and give them more opportunities, and I will guarantee you that those guys were lobbying for them in the locker room at halftime. He's to the 15, and did he get in? No, down at the one-yard line. and then set sail for the end zone. And he nearly made it, too. But he's going to be tracked down just short of the goal line. So big play there that's going to set him up with first and goal at the one-yard line. After the big play, a chance to finish now on first and goal. And they'll turn to the power game to try to get in. And trying to push forward, but he is going to be stuffed up in the backfield. That's going to go as a loss of two, and it'll be second down. After a play like that, there should be congratulations all the way around, I think, because if you can stop a big fullback like that, that's not easily done. Yeah, he does not go down easily. You're right, but he did there. They'll run for it with Pierce. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. It'll be a loss of a full three yards there, and it also brings up third down. That's a nice example of good team defense right there. Ball was snapped at the one-yard line. They knocked him back and caused a loss. But you notice they were trying to find any type of a gap to run through. Wasn't one available, and they stuffed the play right there in the middle of the field. Meanwhile, on third down, they take a shot at the end zone. But it's incomplete. Brandon, some of those windows that throw the football that exist when you're between the 20s, they don't exist when you're this close to the goal line. But as a former DB, I liked it closer to the goal line. Tighter windows made it easier to cover people, actually. The kick by Fairbairn is good. And that would make this a 10-point game at 16-6. Well, they picked up right where they left off in the first half. First drive after the break, they come away with three and increase that lead. Yeah, and you just want to keep building on that lead, don't you? Whether it's six points or three points, take everything you can get, keep maneuvering, keep adding to it, keep making it difficult for them to come back. Fairbairn now following the made field goal. He'll send this one away. And he won't quite make it to the 25. Here comes the Buccaneers offense. They get their first reps of the second half. And their deficit a little wider now than it was at halftime following the field goal a moment ago. But the goal is still the same because you know they want to come out, establish a rhythm in the second half, and get going. Make no mistake about it, though. Kicking field goals, not in their game plan. They need to get the ball in the end zone. Now Mayfield and the Bucks come up on first and 10 at their own 24. They'll try and start this drive in the air. And he short arms that one just a bit. It's low and incomplete. 
That certainly appeared to be a play call where they were just trying to make second down, second and short. I think they thought the coverage was off a little bit more than it was. Nice job there pressing up on it and forcing the incompletion. Now a second and ten. Now a give up the middle. This is White. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. It'll go as a loss of a yard, so now they deal with third and 11. But these guys are going to chop into that deficit. They got to do a much better job in the run game. Caught behind the line of scrimmage. No yardage will be found. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Throwing Mayfield. And that is incomplete. Well, this is just a continuation of what we saw in the first half. So much for the fresh start to begin the third quarter. Still off target throws, no rhythm throwing the football, and obviously no touchdown scored in this game. Here comes the Buccaneers punter now as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. Taken from just outside the 30. 44-yard punt, return of nine. And it will be first and 10 as they take over. And now out comes Houston. And they split the uprights last time for three. They've got the lead. They're not going to play this conservative. They're, they're not hoping for another field goal. They're hoping for a touchdown. I'm with you on that one. I like where your head is. I like the way you're thinking because you're exactly right. Trying to sit on a lead and play that way, that doesn't work too well for most teams. Run your offense. Yeah, Run what you do best. On the gas. Exactly. Put it all the way down and try to increase your lead in a big way. And the best way to do it, touchdowns. Antoine Winfield up from the secondary with a tackle. Give credit to the defense for stringing that play out. And they gave up no cutback angle. You know he was trying to dart through. No place for him to go. A nice job there, only giving up a three-yard gain. The second down throw now from Stroud. He finds his man complete. It's Schultz. A gain of three last play. This time they double it and pick up six. That's a staple of this offense. Drag route to the tight end. Yeah, he's unable to use his size to break off much more yardage after the catch, but still an effective gain nonetheless. Here now, third and a yard. On the bootleg, Stroud. Open man is Jordan, the tight end. And he is going to have a Texans first down as they're able to convert by plenty there on third and one. And the tight end is certainly a position built to move the chains because they can control space underneath. If they've got good hands, then of course they're a dynamic target. But one other thing is they're right in the sight lines of a quarterback on just about every play. And that makes it easier for the quarterback to pick him out and deliver. Pierce now up the middle. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. Kid had a ton of success here so far, but you get the feeling that he might be on the verge of popping one. Yeah, even on that one, there was a little bit of a hole, but it closed there quickly at the end. From the 38 now, here's second down and two. Stroud sets up the play action. As this completes to Woods. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. Running it out of the gun with Pierce. And he'll take this ahead for about four. Second down coming up. And that was a quality play to start a new set of downs. That was simply an offensive line winning the battle up front and winning in a big way and giving their guy in the backfield a nice lane to hit. Second and six. And Stroud now to throw. His throw incomplete. Oh, they'll certainly be on the tablets going over that one for sure. Clearly, they were expecting something else out of the defense and couldn't adjust to make that completion happen. So it's third and six, and this will be the eighth play of the drive. Back to throw. Here's Stroud. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And this is going to lead to another first down. 
as the tackle's made at the box 14. It's a gain of 14 down 2 to 14. And now we get into the psychology of the whole thing because a lot of teams with a two-score lead in the third quarter, they almost become defensive with their offense, just playing not to lose. I think with this team, you got to figure at this point, this is a great spot for them to go into attack mode, really try and put the hammer down and finish this one off. Back to the ground with Pierce. And they get to him quickly here as he stopped right around the 13. Credited with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Early down stuffs to put this offense in a precarious position. We know that securing the point of attack, especially against the big-body guys in the middle of this D, has got to be priority one. Second and nine. And they'll go right back to Pierce. And he'll fight his way down right around the 12. Back-to-back one-yard runs here, so that leaves him with a third down at eight. But not much on that run, Charles. No, that's exactly the way to execute a run blitz there. They guessed correctly that they would move the ball on the ground, honed in on it, and stopped him. Mark that down for a win in the defense's column. Stroud on third down now. He was open, but he couldn't get it to him. It's incomplete. They converted twice on third down that drive already, but couldn't make it a third. We always talk about in-game adjustments. How about what the defense did there, able to shut them down on that attempt? Kaimi Fairbairn now to attempt the Texan field goal. From the left half, should be a fairly easy one here. Fairbairn able to put this one through, and that will extend their lead even further. So the lead grows here incrementally, but I think the way their defense is playing, you feel okay with just getting through. They've definitely been stout so far, but now that can all change because if one guy gets loose for 70 yards, this is a different game. But as it stands, field goals are good. Just keep adding to that lead. Fairbairn now following the main field goal. He'll send this one away. Taking it about the one. Now the Buccaneers offensive unit back out on the field. See if they can put this drive in the end zone, Charles, because it, it's been a little bit of a rough go at times. They've had to punt the football a ton in this ball game because of stalled out drives. So are you saying that you're kind of tired of seeing the punter run out there and do his thing during this game? Is that what you're trying to say? You, well, I mean, I'm okay with it. I have a feeling that this offense, they don't want to see the punter again. And frankly, the punter doesn't want to run out there anymore himself. He would love to see his offense put together a drive and give his leg a rest. The drive starts with a run by White. And boy, this defense again really making things tough on him as they stop him for no gain. As usual, the hallmark of a good run defense, linebackers making plays near the line of scrimmage. Absolutely nowhere to run there. The rush defense stout on first down. Here's second and 10 from the 20. They'll try the right side here with White. And he'll go down at the 26, following a gain of six. I think we can safely say that those types of players are the backbone of this offense. We know not every run's going to be a big hitter, but you know they'll take that type of result on each and every attempt. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Here's Mayfield. Steps away to his left. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. It'll be a gain of six that time as it moves the chains as well. No surprise to see a sideline fired up by that big play. Heck, we're fired up, and we're supposed to be neutral. That's a quarterback putting his body on the line to fight and just barely get the first down. When he does something like that, it gets everyone ready to lay it all out there and try and match his intensity. And he'll work this one up to about the 38. 72 yards for him on the ground now as he has been terrific here this afternoon. Well, no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, seven yards on first down, that fits the bill. Second down and three. Mayfield to throw it. Looking for Godwin and he's got him complete. 
And Godwin going to have a Bucks first down as the tackle made at the 42. Three yards there, good enough to keep the drive moving. I think that's a big pickup for a first down because when you run a drag route against zone, you're sometimes asking for trouble because you might run into a defender. Yeah, well, there they ran into a first down, executed it to perfection. First down, here's White. And he edges forward, but only gets a pair of yards out of it. It's second down. They suspected that it was a power play up the middle coming at them, and boy, were they right. That defense got downhill in a hurry and limited them to just a couple on first down. From the 44-yard line, here's a second and eight. Mayfield. And his throw is incomplete. The defender certainly didn't forget about him leaking out of the backfield. There's a guy ready and waiting to pick him up in coverage. And that throw had no shot. Eighth play of the drive, forthcoming, and they need eight yards on third down. Mayfield down. Going for Evans, but that pass is intercepted. Shaquille Griffin with a pick. And the Texans are going to have great field position here as this is returned just shy of midfield. This defense, Charles, coming up with another interception. They have really done an excellent job of locking up these receivers. Yeah, they're really on fire. They are actually doing what they talk about all the time, which is plastering to receivers when they're in their zones. They didn't give up a touchdown in the first half. Haven't done so here in this half either. Blanket of the field going all the way back to the opening drive and they come up with a pick right there. Good starting field position for the Houston Texans here as they come up first and 10, just shy of midfield at the 49. They'll start by running the option to the right. That's a good way to start the drive, 17 yards and a first down. But I tell you, there is no antidote for speed, even at the quarterback position, as he keeps it himself and turns it into good yardage. And it still takes time for a defender to react, even as quarterbacks carry the ball more and more in today's NFL. They're still a little bit in disbelief and realize, oh my goodness, he's running with the ball. He may be 8, 10, 12 yards downfield at that point. Looking for more there on first down, but this throw downfield incomplete. Tremendous field position there and a perfect time to do exactly what they did. Take a shot at the end zone. And they went for the big play, just unable to complete it. Second and 10. Thanks for tagging along with us here from Houston, Texas. Here's Stroud. Throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. Well, that's a defense coordinator's got to be happy with that result. They took away all options downfield and forced the incompletion. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has them staring at a third and ten. Throwing now is Stroud. This defense definitely in his head there on third down, and he's pretty fortunate. They didn't call for grounding on this one. That was a good 10 feet over everyone's head. Now Kaimi Fairbairn out for the field goal try for the Texans. On the right hash, officially this will be a 51-yard attempt. The kick by Fairbairn is good, and that will extend their lead even further. Well, they're able to come away with the interception, Charles. They aren't able to move the ball all that much. However, they do get three out of it with a field goal. Yeah, and anytime you do force a turnover, you have to come out of it with points. Everybody wants six. They'll take the three there. Now it's their opportunity to do it again. field goal he'll send this one away and he had no room to run as he's tackled down inside the 20 
And the Buccaneers getting ready to go as they take the field. So now, Charles, this drive maybe a touch more important, trying to erase the memory of that interception they had the last time out. Yeah, and everyone goes through this because even the best in the game, you're going to have games where it just doesn't go right for you and interceptions result. So, frankly, to me, it's all about how you respond, not just the types of plays that you call, but how you carry yourself, how you show your team that you're still with it, and how you continue to lead. And he sneaks his way forward only for a couple here, second down. I if they want to start getting back into this game, it behooves them to get better on first down. Yeah, certainly not what they were looking for there out of the opening play of this drive. From the 20, here's the second and eight. They keep it on the ground, White again. And he's brought down at the 24 after a gain of four. So they'll get a little extra time to come up with his third down play as we play three quarters. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. The Bucks on third down. They've had a lot of chances, but not much success, converting only three times. This is third and four. That's complete to his receiver, Godwin. And he is going to have a box first down by about three yards or so as they wind up getting seven there on third and four. Fourth quarter, every drive so critical, and you figure may only get one more shot after this, so a touchdown's imperative on this drive. It is, but you also have to think to yourself in play calling, don't hold anything back. Don't save it for the second touchdown. You've got the first one for the second one to even matter. And now Mayfield on the bootleg. That's completed right side to Palmer. They'll give him four yards there, and it'll be second down. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. They're tackling them almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays, harder to move it. Now Mayfield, quick throw, fighting Mike Evans. And Evans will have a box first down as he'll get this up to the 43. Eight yards on the pick up there, and it moves the sticks. A couple of first downs has the football positioned at the 43 as they come up first and 10. Mayfield on play action. That is caught. It's Chris Godwin. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. That one goes for 30 yards. And here's a spot where this offense says, we got to start making something happen. We're down two scores. It's the fourth quarter. We've got to start moving with some urgency. And here's a big play that gives them a ray of hope that they can get back in this one. So now then, the big play has them all the way inside the 30 now, first and 10. They run straight ahead here with White down at the 25. Yeah, I don't know if it's exactly a win-win, but if you're on offense, you'll take that kind of a run, all right? It was kind of stacked up, found a little bit of yardage, and frankly, they're pretty close to staying on schedule on offense. The playbook is still open for the coordinator. Second and seven. They stay on the ground with White. And he's going to be close to a first down as the tackle is made at the Texans' 19-yard line. 89 yards rushing for him now as he has been tremendous all day long. Not too many offenses want to turn down long drives, but when you're down what they are, they've got to pay it off with some points. Play number nine set to come here on the drive on third and two. They'll try to pick this up on the ground with White. And boy, he is very close to a first down, but from where they're spotting that football, he's going to be a foot or so short. I bet they thought they had picked that one up because it was a third and two call, and they got awfully close. Now we're at fourth and inches. I wonder if they think they're feeling lucky here <laughs> and maybe want to go pick it up. Okay, so thought they might go for it here down late. Instead, they trot out the field goal unit. 
This just a 35-yard attempt from the left half. And his kick here is good. And that will cut the lead down to 13. So they're content to take the three. Somewhat of a conservative call there, opting not to go for it on fourth and inches. And that's from a team that you and I know is not usually playing it close to the vest. It's a little bit of a surprise that they opted for the three instead of going for it. After the main field goal, here's McLaughlin back out there to kick it away. This taken in right around the goal line. And he takes this near the 25. Just a little pass there. Call it the 26. Houston set to take over. Now there are two scores on the plus side. Still time here this fourth quarter, but maybe you start thinking about playing keep away? Yeah, I think here's the situation. You're not thinking touchdowns anymore. You're just thinking first downs to keep up with your theme there, playing keep away. First downs, they can't touch the ball. First and 10, it's Stroud. Got this into the hands of the tight end, Jordan. It'll be a gain of five, and it'll be second down. I know sometimes we can get fooled when we watch him make catches, as we just saw him do there, because he really looks like a wide receiver the way he goes about his business. Yeah, 230, 240 range. Yeah, not, not super huge. Maybe not counted on to be that inline point of attack blocker that we used to have in the good old days. But you can flex him out. You can run wide receiver routes with him. You can make him a primary target. And that's how he'll shred a defense. Oh, moving from his tight end spot there. Do you think that perhaps the play call was for him? Still second down, yeah. The false start penalty, and now they're back to needing 10 yards on second down. Pierce takes it straight ahead. And he'll be tackled right on the chalk at the 45. A big one there for the Texans, 18 yards. The running game continues to be a big part of their success here early in the fourth quarter. And with those types of runs, that tells you they feel very competent in their running game. They feel very strong at this stage of the contest, and they want to keep doing exactly what we saw there, running the ball down their throat. And nothing much materializing there on the first down run. He'll get a couple, and that's it. Brandon, I've got to think this offensive line has got some smiles on its faces. And, and I know it sounds crazy, but they practiced for this back in training camp. They knew they'd be in situations where it'd be extra defenders in the box coming after them trying to keep them from locking down a game. Right now, they want to show the world they're up to the challenge. Now, meanwhile, here's a second down throw that's knocked away and incomplete. Oh, I like the calmness of how he played the ball here. No panic in his eyes as that throw arrived. Tracked it from the moment it left the quarterback's hand, and that's just where he needed to be to knock it away. So the failure to connect on second down, that leaves him staring up here at a third and eight. A shotgun snap to Stroud. And that will be incomplete. As defensive coordinators around the league tell me all the time, that throw is not for every quarterback because you've really got to drive the ball downfield. It's going to be a tight window for him to fit that one into. In this case, unsuccessfully. Here's Cameron Johnston now as he's on to punt for Houston. And he'll get off a fairly short kick here as this is toward the sideline. And now where will the side judge stop his walk? That's the question. He says it crossed out of bounds at about the 17-yard line. Now the Buccaneers' offense gets ready to head back onto the field. Their defense was able to force the punt. That's the good news. But this is still a two-score game, and they need points on this drive and in a relatively quick manner. Now Mayfield and the Bucks come up on first and 10 at their own 17-yard line. They'll start here with a handoff to White, and he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. Defenses always talk about earning the right to rush the passer on third down, and you know what offenses want? 
win first down so they can set things up for themselves better. And that wasn't helpful there. Not a big impact on first down. From the 21, here's second down and seven. Mayfield looks to throw. And when you've thrown as many interceptions as he has in this one, you definitely start getting a little hesitant to throw the ball out wide because that's prime pick six territory. That time, he made sure the only guy was going to catch it was sitting in the third row. They head to the line facing a third and seven following the incompletion on second down. To throw, Mayfield. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he is going to have the Buccaneers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. And in a two-score game, obviously, every play, every third down, like we saw there, magnified big pickup. It was a huge pickup. What they really want, though, is to not even get to third down. They've got to maximize time and conserve as much as possible. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. They go play action. Mayfield. And incomplete. A drop there in the middle third of the field. That'll bring up second down. It looked like they had something there, but I think that he was thinking about running with the football before he actually hauled it in, and that led to a big drop. Here's second and ten. Throwing Mayfield. And his throw here is incomplete. Had an open man that time, but ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely. Just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. They'll throw again. Here's Mayfield. Gets the check down throw to White. And he'll only get this to about the 44 as they stop him short of the line to gain. They do get seven out of that, but not enough to prevent a fourth down. I know where we're headed on this. Terrific catch. Gets his feet down. Sets up a fourth down in short situation. But then we're wondering, why didn't he get to the first down marker running his route? Am I correct? You got to know where the marker is, right? Got to figure it out. I know every receiver has taught that. Sometimes circumstances change it. At least they have an opportunity to make a decision with not much yardage to go. But correct me if I'm wrong, you know, you're down two scores. I don't think you need to rush just yet, but you can't take your time either. Yeah, even if you don't want to commit to full two-minute offense, you have to up the tempo, up the urgency. Maybe you're starting to call two plays in a huddle each time you snap the ball. So the fourth down conversion sets him up with this. First and 10 at the 40. Going to the air again with Mayfield. Now there's a short one taken in by Otten. And give him six yards here as he stopped near the 35 at the 34. They gave up the completion there, but this is what zone defenses count on. Catching the ball and not much run after the catch. And from the 34, here's second and four. They run the draw play. This is White. They give him about four on the play, but he's marked short, so it'll be third and about the length of the football. Pretty good job defensively. Thought he was going to get it, but they knew where that marker was, and they stopped him just short of it. What it does is emphasize that strategic football and situational football is not just played on the offensive side, is it? Defense understanding, as you noted, where the first down marker was and making sure they didn't get there. Now a third down is the target incomplete. They sure went against conventional wisdom, calling a pass on third and inches. Had to be thinking to themselves, the defense is going to overcommit against the run. Should be an easy pitch and catch. Didn't turn out that way. All right, they're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. They'll run for it. This is White. And he's able to pick up the first down here before he goes down at the 26. The time to pull out the stops is now, and they convert there on fourth down. He's been tough for this defense to handle, over 100 yards. You kind of knew that they were going to him on that play, didn't you? They certainly did. That's one of those situations where you simply say, my best runner over my best blockers, let's go ahead and pick it up. And I don't care if they know it on the other side. Here we come, and they got it done. 
Now following the completion, we're going to get a stoppage here for an injury. The medical staff will attend to him, and we will step aside. There's a first and 10 at the 14-yard line. They'll go up the middle with White. And they get to him quickly here as he stopped right around the 13. And he was brought down by Malik Collins. Well, how about the big guy there showing some agility? He just flowed from his D-tackle position in order to make that play. And they're going to speed things up here. Now a second down throw for Mayfield. That escapes the sack. He'll dump this one off here to White. And they'll go backwards here, losing yardage to the 14. Boy, how good has this defense been seemingly all game long? I really think right from the first snap, I think you're really on to something there. In this passing game, it just can't get off the ground. In that play, it wound up losing yardage. On third down, Mayfield. And Evans hauls it in. Touchdown, Bucks. Mike Evans, a 14-yard touchdown. And the Buccaneers have made it a one-score game again here in the fourth. I'm not sure win-win is the proper term here, but it certainly felt like it. They got the touchdown they needed, but if I'm on the defensive side of the ball, okay, you got the touchdown, but it sure took you a long time. Yeah, because offensively there, you're probably hoping for a one-to-five play drive. That one ate up a little more time than they were hoping. You're exactly right, and if you have that one-to-five play drive, you actually build up momentum and even more hope when they had to slog their way downfield. They got the touchdown, but it's almost like, ah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you know. It doesn't you got, feel right. Exactly. <laughs> Following the touchdown, here's McLaughlin to kick off. From a yard or two deep, here comes a return. And yeah, he'll be brought down shy of the 20, so the decision to bring it out of the end zone, not a good one. Two hands on the football here as they run on first down. And now we'll see a timeout used on defense as they stop it right out of the break with 1.57 to go in the ball game. Second and long, but you got to figure this almost certainly another run. He's going to get it again. Just looking to get forward and protect the ball. The Bucs going to go ahead and use the second of their timeouts. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. They'll come up now third and three. Pierce will try to pick it up. And the Texans are going to have a first down, and that is a big one, as they should be able to run it out from here. Second and 11 at the 41. Set the man in motion too late. This is going to be a delay. Delay game. The offense knew it. They were already starting to walk back as that one is accepted. Still second down. Again. 
Down to a knee here as the Texans look to let the clock roll. Taking that knee, maybe just a sigh of relief. They withstood a big fourth quarter comeback. Able to hold on, though. Certainly looked like they had things going their way, didn't it, in the fourth quarter? They had to just hold on, as you said. Furious assault on them, but they were able to get it done, take a knee, and head to the locker room with a win. On is the punter, Johnston now, as he sends this one away. Close ball game comes to an end. On that last play, Charles, they were on the wrong side of midfield. They needed something near a miracle, and they couldn't get it done. Yeah, the effort, that was good. Very good, in fact. They were just a little too far out to get a decent look at the end zone for that last opportunity. Couldn't get it done, but a nice game.